Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is John and this is your Modern Tech Breakdown. Today I'm taking a look at all the hype around memory safe programming. Let's jump into it. So you may have noticed that there's been a fair bit of media attention on memory safe programming languages and the risks posed by so-called unsafe languages like C and C++. If you're an IT professional but not a developer or perhaps you're a developer that's not familiar with these low-level languages, you might be wondering what all this media attention is about. So let's take this opportunity to talk about the ways that these low-level languages manage memory and what that means for the security of systems built with them. The most common languages cited as being memory unsafe are probably C and C++. These low-level languages allow the programmer to request memory from the operating system or use memory allocated on the stack. I'm not gonna get into the details of the difference between these two methods, but suffice to say that the programmer literally has the ability to request a certain number of bytes of RAM memory that the programmer can then use as they see fit. Now that the programmer has this memory, it's up to them to manage it correctly. And that's where the problems start. All the issues or vulnerabilities created by so-called unsafe languages stem from the programmer failing to account for all the scenarios that could impact that memory that they have requested. The two most common issues are called buffer overflow and use after free. Let's dive into an example of each one. So the internet is a wonderful place. And here is a, a blog post from Leon Granat that has some code samples, link in the description. Buffer overflow is the first example. And all you really need to know is in these two lines of code right here. You can see that the buffer of 10 char types is declared, basically a buffer that can contain up to 10 alphanumeric characters. And then the following line is where the problem is. Stir copy or string copy is a very commonly used standard function and it does what you think it would do. It copies one string into a buffer, which is all well and good unless the string being copied into the buffer is longer than the buffer itself. In that case, memory gets unintentionally overwritten. The memory copied overflows the buffer and writes data into memory locations that the programmer did not intend. This typically can happen when a program is accepting user input, for example, a command line program accepting typed user input. An attacker could write an excessive amount of data as input and overflow the buffer. Once that occurs, the data input could start to be executed as part of the running program, and from there the attacker can, can take control of the program and do whatever they want. So again, this is a situation where the programmer did not anticipate how much data might be copied into the buffer. The program logic should include a check of how much data is to be moved and compare it to the size of the buffer. All right, the next issue is called use after free. As I mentioned, these low level languages allow the programmer to request memory from the operating system and the computer only has so much memory. So it's also important for the programmer to free the memory when the program no longer needs it. In this example, memory is requested from the operating system and it's populated with some data. That memory is then freed by the program, as you can see right here, the call to free. But unfortunately, there's still a reference to the now freed memory. If that reference is called by the program, as you can see here, the program is now vulnerable attack. An attacker could attempt to write data to the newly freed memory and cause the program to execute the code that the attacker provided, thus giving them control of the program. So because of these issues, there's developed some media attention to possibly replacing code written in these languages with so-called memory safe languages. Honestly, I don't see that happening. There's far too much critical code written in C and C++ to change. I don't think the Linux kernel is gonna change. There's mountains of Windows code written in C++. It's just too big of a hill to climb. And let's be honest, programmers can be a bit arrogant and firmly believe that the code they have written couldn't possibly have a memory safety issue. Only rookies make those mistakes, right? So while it's great that we have new languages that can prevent developers from blowing their own foot off, I don't think we're gonna see a massive shift towards Rust or any of these other languages anytime soon. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Hopefully this explanation was helpful. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you next time.